Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. If you're new, I am Steve Chapman from Fishing Florida Radio, and today we're talking about Major League Fishing and the Elites. Both now have had one tournament, both here in Florida, one at uh, Lake Toho, which is really close to me, and the other one in St. John's. And I wanted to give you an idea on the differences, the pros and cons to each one from a media standpoint and from a fan. Because quite honestly, I'm a fan first and then I am a media person, kind of second. I enjoy talking to the guys, that kind of stuff. But y'all can't get enough Major League Fishing right now. That's the truth. Major League Fishing has come out and just been something amazing but at the same time the Bassmaster Elites had to has had to change up a little things brought in some new people and I think you're going to be very surprised on on the level of talent that's still at the Bassmaster Elite these guys can really catch fish but before we get into that let's kind of take a step back and just think about how this all started if you don't know Bass started Back in uh, 1968, actually the first tournament was by Ray Scott, was in 1967, and it was at uh, Beaver Lake, Arkansas. It was $100 to get in, and they won $2,000. Let's move forward a few years where they had the first, where Ray Scott staged the first Bassmaster Classic, which is the Super Bowl of all fishing, and that was in 1971 on Lake Mead in Nevada. And when they got there, it was they weren't the anglers weren't told where they were going fishing. It was a mystery. They got on a plane and trusted Ray, went to this place and knew nothing about where they were going, how they were going to do, how they were going to, what was they were going to fish with, all that stuff. And it was, it's kind of where Major League Fishing has kind of sort of gone. So here we have several years ago, numerous years ago. Major League Fishing starts with their Summit Cups and everything else. And at that point in time, they the, the, the 10 or 20 anglers, I think it was 20 anglers, 10 anglers that started Major League Fishing, started talking about, you want to know what? We should create a new tour. Let's, let's make it based around what the anglers feel like. Now, you have to remember one thing right off the bat. These guys are pros and they're businessmen. They are, they're out there to make money and their lives depend on it, their families' lives depend on it. And when you start thinking of what Major League Fishing did just last year, when the speculation started, um, it was it was really about, we're gonna, we're gonna put together a great group of people and we're going to, you're going to get paid more. And so that kind of, that kind of started it. You know, it, it happened right about ICAST. So it was probably June or July of last year. There was rumblings in, in the industry there. You know, this is what's going to happen. And then the speculation instantly started happening. And the speculation was a lot of fun for us on the radio show. Because who's going to go? Who's not going to go? How are they going to approach it? You know, some and and everyone came out and put great videos. Behind the scenes, it was more or less like, you know, who who got who who was invited and who wasn't invited, and that was a major thing. So slowly but surely, we started to see a lot of really great videos. People coming out like, if you missed Jacob Wheeler's video, he did a whole thing on like LeBron uh, LeBron James going to Miami for the Heat. And then there were other people that just kind of led you on, like Mike Iaconelli. However, he did hint at where he was going to go. And then he went to that static page. And whoever came up with that idea, no offense, this is an opinion, shoot that person or fire that person. Because that was a horrible idea. Now, Mike still, Iaconelli still went to Major League Fishing and hopefully just, just does a good job and has fun and fishes. Um... But really, that's that's just an opinion. I didn't like how it was done. A lot of people did great videos. Some people explained how they were going and why they were going. And uh, some people were really humble. And it was really kind of a, 
a good you kind of you slowly found out that the the anglers that were leaving the elites were some of the top named anglers going to major league fishing and then everything started getting crazy you know bass started changing things up look we're going to give we have a little incentive if you stay with us and we're going to pay out people and that wasn't done until there was this major deal that had started with Major League Fishing, unfortunately. Um, and there were a lot of hurt feelings. <laughs> there were some relationships that were hurt, and there were a lot of hurt friends that made that move to Major League Fishing. And hopefully in the, in the future that can be, those relationships can be mended. But at this point in time, all everybody wanted to know was Major League Fishing, where they were going to fish, who was going, all that stuff. From a media and from a fan standpoint, I couldn't get enough of it, and most of you couldn't get enough of it. Um, and Bass had to look at back at itself and try to make some changes. And also, they needed to add they needed to add a lot of anglers, and they've brought in. Some kids from, and I might say kids, I don't mean kids, but young adults, young men, they brought them in from the college series and they brought them in from the the opens and all this stuff that have, have never had the opportunity to do it that now we're getting the opportunity. At the same time, people were leaving FLW to go to Major League Fishing and go to the elites. FLW really didn't change anything. Uh, they were staying the same except they were getting rid of co-anglers. At that point in time, somewhere in that point in time, a PowerPoint presentation went out to, to all the major league guys, all the guys that were getting, getting into this, and they told them, here's here's the payouts, here's what you're getting paid. Here's the difference between major league fishing, and here's the difference between, uh, and here's the difference for the elites, and here's FLW. And you could slowly see, there was a drastic difference on why these guys were making the move over. Uh, also, there were other issues that were happening, or Issues in the past that they didn't know about, that we didn't know about, that slowly started to hear about. So, like I said, we 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 had a, we've had a great time with the speculation and and saying things that maybe were a little off key, but you kind of wanted to look at it. So the last two weeks, major league fishing was at Lake Toho in the Kissimmee chain, and then last weekend they were that was two weeks ago. Last weekend. The elites were at, at the St. John's. So I thought I'd, like I said, I thought I'd give you some pros and cons from a fan media perspective on some of the things that, that are good and sometimes are bad. And then there's some questions that maybe you can answer me at the end. Now, I want you to do me a favor. If you like this video, go to our, uh, go to the YouTube page, subscribe, click like, Hit the leave a comment and click the notification button. At the, and while you're at it, email us or go to our Facebook page. If you email us, it's info at fishingfloridaradio.com. Or you can go to our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash fishingflorida. Send us a private message or an email, and we'll get you on a list for some prize pack goodies. They're free. You might as well do it. So let's look at some of the pros and cons to the Major League Fishing versus the Bassmaster Elites. Hopefully I can get a little for the, the, the pros and a little crazy sound for the cons. Now again, this is an opinion. For the love of God, I don't want to get beat up for saying these things, but this is how I look at it from a fan perspective. People I've talked to that were at both events, people that, I've, uh, that I respect, and other media and fans that I talked to during both events. So, Major League Fishing. Let's just start it with them. Um, pros. Ding, hopefully. They have the biggest names in the sport. Kevin Van Dam, Palinick, Skeet Reese, Edwin Evers, Jason Christie. Oh my gosh, there's so many you can say, and, and, and I apologize for missing the biggest, of, the biggest names out there. But those guys and more are on Major League Fishing. That's great. They do their thing. They go fishing. You can go to score track. You can see all of that stuff as it happens and watch a great show online. I wish they had an app that worked on Apple TV so I could watch it right off Apple TV, but they don't. And that's a that's a pro for 
Bassmaster. I'm not, I shouldn't go into both, but the app for ESPN always has the, the Bassmaster on internet TV, which I use. So that's cool. Well, the guys go fishing and majorly fishing. They come back in and there's a recap. First con. It's great that they bring them in and they have an hour and a half, which I don't like. From a media side, it's great to because you can get that media perspective, but the guys are coming in, they're kind of winding down, they're hungry, they're tired, they gotta go to the bathroom, or they're on their phones. Um, it's supposed to be a media or a fan experience, but most of the guys sit on their boats or in their cars and figure out the next couple, what they're gonna do the next day or if they have to fish the day after. The hour and a half that you have to wait, hour and a half, two hours, that read that that gap time, it's it's just too long. It, it's just too long. Here in Toho, they got in at 3.30. Some of them got in at 4 o'clock. Uh, the recap started at 5, 5.15, 5.30. Now I know it's their first tournament and they're having some issues probably. But by the time that it started, every person that was there left. And there weren't many people. They had a crowd, but not a big crowd. They had... People that waited, but once it got dark, everybody left. So that recap was in the dark and just should have been a little bit earlier. Get it going. Let's get it going. Get it done and let people in. At the same time, the anglers should be roaming around and talking to people. There were people. Hunter, um, I mean, Fletcher Sh Shryock was right at the fence, was signing autographs and doing all that. Same with Aaron Martins and a whole bunch of people, Shaw Grigsby. But there were a lot of anglers that just sat in their cars and waited for things to go on. So I didn't really like it. There's some pros and cons to that one. There's a pro and con. The immediate side, it's great. Fan experience, not great. That was, So um, before you hit, they hit the stage, this is another. Um, before they hit the stage, you already know how the person did exactly. Who's in first Who's in 40th? There's no drama or suspense that's happening. You can watch it on your, it's great. They, and they've designed it to be on, you can watch it there at your house. But if you're going to the event, there's no drama or no suspense to build up or no fish to be brought up. It's how did your day go? This and that. I kind of like, well, we'll go into it. Uh, I wrote it down. I wrote it down twice. Kind of long. A time to do recap. If you don't know, I have notes on either side and over here because I didn't want to keep looking down and not being kind of trying to look like you're in my look a person in the eyes. Um, a pro, there were lots of locals. There was a lot of local and big vendors at Major League Fishing. There were uh, Toho Marine was there and they were they had boats galore. I mean, boats galore. Uh, they had a lot of space at the Major League Fishing, which was great. Um, and, the, you know, that kind of helps you walk around, not bump into people, blah, blah, blah. Some cons. There was nothing to eat or drink. There wasn't a vendor to save your life for something to eat or drink. There was no vendors for Major League Fishing merchandise. I wanted to buy a hat. Where is that hat? I wanted to buy a hat. And give it away that had anglers sign it. I ended up bringing a Fishing Florida radio hat. Um, and I will give this away later on. It has Kevin Van Dam and Scroggins and um, Brennan Coulter, Fletcher, uh, Shaw, Aaron Martins, Randy Howell, Mark Davis, um, Jacob Prosnick, Bobby Lane, uh, Brennan Palinick. I think that's Tharp and uh, Adrian Gafina. I don't know Adrian's last name. So I'm going to give that away on the Facebook page here soon. Um, if you look at another pro for them, the show that uh, they put on online is is really good. The little massive thing in the back to give a better boost or a better signal to send stuff in is great. Now, it isn't technically live. They're filming nonstop, and then if they... If someone catches a fish, they go to it. It's it's filmed. It's fairly live, but it isn't live live. Sorry, I have no idea why it beeped. I have no idea where I was there either. So anyway, they have great footage there on uh, Major League Fishing. You can't beat it. All the boats, they're, gonna, they're thinking about doing 40. They have great footage. Great, great footage. Uh, another pro and con at the same time. I, I've always been, not that I don't mind change. Not that I don't mind change, but... For whatever reason, 
Um, while I thought they did a good job as commentators, it it wasn't Saunders and Mercer and Zona and Height and those guys. I really, I really do like. I appreciate what the guys at Major League Fishing do, but for whatever reason, it, it seemed to stutter a little bit. Um, but that might be because they're brand new, and so I shouldn't really critic. I'm not. I, that isn't critic criticizing them. It's just I'm I'm kind of used to those other guys. Uh, J T. Kinney's amazing, amazing guy is a, a stud fisherman, and he did a great job. So hats off to him. Um, I mentioned the attendance was low and, um, fishing wise, they're all fishing for big fish, no doubt about it. Um, and the scoring every bass or every legal bass is great. Um, but when, when it came down to it, it came down to being quantity over quality. And, um, not that they weren't trying for big fish. But we found out on Lake Toho, if you found a school of, of little fish, the one fours, the one fives, you wore their asses out. And you caught every one. And why not? You're going for money here, man. I mean, that makes sense. So that's some of the Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour pros and cons. Now on, on the elites, some of the cons. I don't know any of the anglers, any of the new anglers. And that's my fault. I will say... The Johnston brothers, who the, I think he came in second to the amazing Rick Clun, who's ageless at this point in time, um, is a stud. The, 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 those boys can flat out fish. Now, they might be new, but over the next three tournaments, two or three tournaments, we're going to know all about these new guys. Are they Kevin Van Dam? No. No one's Kevin Van Dam. But, uh, the elites are gonna are gonna push and show you these new anglers that have come in. Not to mention, there's other great anglers still on the elites: Bill Lowen, Seth Felder, um, Jonathan John Cruz. Um, that guy's unbelievable. Rick Klon, of course, Brandon Card. There's still a group of anglers out there that are really, really, really good anglers. I mean, really good anglers. And probably could be on Major League Fishing if they accepted the invitation or whatever, whatever it is. A major pro, major, major pro. The way in it, the elites is awesome. Dave Mercer out there screaming, getting the crowd going. It's 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 drama. I mean, you kind of know where everybody is at, but you really don't because, and this was at the bottom, there are way too many. This is a con. There's way too many guys on that on the elites that don't know what a two pound fish is compared to a four pound fish. It is mind boggling. The sandbagging and, and really there were a few sa major sandbaggers that went to major league fishing. So now that's even better. We got rid of that sandbagging sucks. I hate it. Another pro pro the crowd at St. John's <laughs> unbelievable. Unbelievable unbelievable i'm not joking i have some I'll, hopefully i can show some clips of just the crowd from st john's it was mind-boggling they all were there loyal loyal people old anglers younger anglers than me and kids all came out full force and they had vendors to eat thank you look you can't keep this physique without eating three times a day i need my food Uh, a con in the, the whole thing. It's hard for fans to meet the anglers. They have them set aside. Uh, it's it's blocked off. Once they weigh in, they hop back in their boat and they split. So if you're a big, massive fan of, I'm going to just tell it, Brandy Card, he'll come out, do his thing, come back after the weigh-in, and he has to leave. They got to get ready for the next day. And I like to see people kind of mingle in and out and see how they were doing and give them the experience and sign autographs and do all that stuff. But that happens with all of them. So it's kind of a con. Uh, this is a pro and a con. It's a pro for, for the elites. It's a con for me. There are just too many people. I don't like to see, I, I love to see all the crowds and get excited and amped up for all those people, but I ain't being touched. So it's just something with me. Um, 
at the elites they had a they had a whole bunch of chairs out front and Dave Mercer did you get a chair you get a chair like Oprah Winfrey I like that I got a pro there were food vendors and food trucks another vet pro they had a vendor with new bass merchandise and swag that you could purchase I like this I like this uh, of course another pro is because you get because they're out there and they're bringing in the fish and some people are sandbagging and some people don't know a one pound fish is to a three pound fish. There is a lot of excitement that builds as everything starts going, especially on day four when they announce the winner, especially this last one. Clun brought in 34-11 or something and jumped into the lead. It was unbelievable. One of my cons, the guys at the that do the live Bass Live, I would not do uh, any of that bonus footage. Or if I would do the bonus footage, I'd make sure that the person had a decent cell phone or cell phone signal. Everyone go into this these people for bonus footage and they're it's a big blur and you don't know you don't even know who it is. Not to mention you can barely hear them. They're, they're talking like that. It's horrible. Get rid of the bonus footage if it isn't a perfect signal. Don't don't lower yourselves. Pro, the best, best commentators. Height, Zona, Mercer, Moore, Such, Tommy Saunders, Tommy Sanders, Tommy Saunders, however you say his last name. Wonderful. A plus. Can't get better. I love them. Uh, I have it down here, a pro, insane amount of people at the thing, a con that they didn't have time to assign uh, stuff for fans, um, a con for me as a media person. I got told I was going to get Rick Klon for an interview after he won. Somehow he vanished. Not good. Not good. If you say you're going to do something, do it. And the other pro was we saw some pigs brought up to the stage and were shown off. Uh, the weird thing is, is even though they were fishing at two different places, um, last week at St. John's, the average fish weighed three, three pounds, four ounces. That's a, that's a nice quality size fish. There is, they do bring in five, don't score all of them, but overall, everyone's talking about, at, we've heard, I've heard about it nonstop, dink fish, but Nah, I can't get into it. So, um, you know, there's lots of pros and cons to each each series. You're either going to like like it or you're not going to like it. It's your opinion, just like my opinion. I was looking at it from a fan and media perspective, and hopefully this helps you and, and you can gather some more information on, you know, what's going on. Will they both change? Of course, they're going to do, they're going to make little changes throughout the years. Major League Fishing especially. I and mean, I had one vendor that said, I don't know why I'm here because I don't see anybody. Why did I show up? They're going to probably justify that and fix it somehow to, to make this better. It is their first year. But here's the questions. And some of them I can answer. But here's some questions that I think are going to be fun to see here shortly. So here's one. Why did so many angler, anglers, why did so many anglers move to Bass Pro Tour? Why did they go to Major League Fishing? Did Bass do something in the past uh, and the anglers were mad and for some reason they jumped ship, ship and went to Major League Fishing? At the same time, anyone who... Well, I'll get into that in a second. Uh, for Major League Fishing, why was there such an early quick response when the invites went out to the anglers? Why did they only have a week or two weeks or three weeks to tell us who was going, who was going and who was staying? It didn't allow Bass to make those changes fast enough. And Bass had to look at themselves and look in the mirror and say, we need to do some major changing. We have got to. And they did. So that's another question. Here's the one that I really like. What happens in three years when Major League Fishing needs a new crop of anglers? Are, they gonna, are people going to jump ship again? I mean, a lot of these people were really big friends and fans of Boyd and, and Gary, and they and they knew what Gary and the group of anglers that he, Gary and Boyd had the group of anglers behind them, and some of them wanted to fish against the best and money. But what happens in three years when some of these guys are, are done? 
Also, at the same time, what happens to Major League Fishing when they have to cut people? And now they have to decide, do I requalify for the elites? Do I go to FLW? Do I retire? I think three years from now, we're going to have another good offseason. And that's going to be good. Because this offseason was amazing. From a media side of it and from a fan, I just honestly loved it. So... Uh, so do they have to qualify? What happens to the great Major League Anglers uh, who have a tough time this season? Do they go back to the elites? And what about this so-called buyout that you have to perform? See, that's something that we don't know about. We haven't heard it yet. I mean, there's some good anglers right now that have had two bad that haven't started off real well in Major League Fishing. And they got to be looking at themselves. I could go back to the elites and be the face. Problem is, is that the elites have some new young guys that are going to be the face of the elites. There's some some studs out there that we all don't know about. And you're going to learn about them fairly soon. And I think you'll be pretty, pretty impressed by how great and good these anglers are. I think you're going to be surprised. Um... We mentioned in one of our shows, we thought that the elites were in trouble only because ba uh, the Bass Pro Tour took so many people away. They took so many people away. But Bass is reloaded. You're going to be surprised. You'll be impressed. These guys, these kids, they're good anglers. You're going to know their names sooner, sooner than later. So... If there's someone you enjoy, I'd say get out there, support them. If it's on the elites, it's on Major League Fishing, whichever one it is, go out there and support them. You know, that's that's the one thing I can tell you that helps anglers and companies. If you see them, if you like someone, if you like us, I mean, heaven forbid, you know, support them. Support whoever it is and tell them that you like them because there's a lot of... There's a lot of weird things that are happening right now. Um, like I said in the thing, relationships were seriously hurt. Seriously hurt. And hopefully they can mend them and everything can get back to normal. So from the media and fan perspective, hopefully I've given you a little bit of information that you didn't know about Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour versus the elites. Could I have thrown FLW in there? Sure. But really FLW made one blanket statement and said, we're not changing anything. Nothing. The Bass guys had an incentive to join. The elites had an incentive to join. And they made sure that all anglers were getting something. All anglers were getting paid. That's a good thing. Takes a little bit of stress off some of these guys that don't have the sponsorships at this point in time. Major League Fishing said, we're having none, n zero across the board entry fees. That is huge. Huge. That takes a lot of stress off them too, and they still have that the opportunity to to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's going to be a really fun season. After one tournament for each, I'm couldn't be more excited about how this season's gonna gonna wrap up and and work. Right, just as of today, both of them are in their second tournaments. Major League Fishing is going. The Bass Elites are going in Lake Lanier. Uh, and the Major League Fishing is at Lake Conroe, and we'll be able to see how it is. I'm going to take notes. I've got notes already on, on Big Fish and how people do, and we'll continue with our interviews. You're going to see us at the Classic and some other tournaments this year, both for Major League Fishing and Bass Elites, and we're just happy that you, you watch us. So again, if you enjoy this, check out some of our other videos, but we'd love to send you some free tackle prize packs. So go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash fishingflorida, or email us at info at fishingfloridaradio.com. Click the subscribe, notification buttons, like us, comment. If you know something we don't know, we'd love to hear it. I'll put it back in. a. will do a, a, a second video of this. If there's something you feel that we need to say, then we'd love to hear from you. If you're going to criticize me, I really don't care. I don't know how to pronounce all their everyone's names. I'm sorry. Some of them I don't even know. That's the truth. 
done the show for 13 years. We've been to eight consecutive classics. There's a lot of guys that are all in that bottom list that we don't talk to. No offense to them. But we're trying to get the people that everyone wants us to see and talk to. So that's what we do. So like it, subscribe, hit the notification button. We'll send you some prize packs and some other stuff. Email us, do all that stuff. But we hope you, uh, I hope you enjoy this, this video. It might be kind of long, but I'm just telling you my opinion on what I saw and heard from other media and fans that were attended Major League Fishing and also the, the Bass Elites. And we're going to have a good year. Needless to say, we're going to have a great year. You want to know why? Because there's more fishing for us to watch online this year and in the, in the upcoming years because both these both these tours are going to compete with, with each other. They don't need to compete with each other, and they shouldn't, but they will because one wants to be better than the other. Everyone's competitive. Everyone's competitive. So, like us. But until we see you again, and I'm not inside my house, get your fish on.